With the 2023 AMA Pro Motocross Championship right around the corner, we sadly have another one of the sports superstars that has confirmed that they will in fact not be lining up for this season's championship. Hey, welcome back to Vital MX for another episode of news break presented by Yoshimura R&D of America. Check them out at yoshimura-rd.com. I'm your host, Michael Lindsay, and yes, we are talking about the Progressive Insurance X-Star Suzuki HEP racer of Ken Roxon. Pretty much since A1 press day on, up until just about a week or two ago, anytime you would field the question to Kenny on what his plans were for the summer, he said he was in for pro motocross. He was committed. He wanted to race it. Everything is pointed that way pretty much regardless of what media outlet asked him the question. However, we've always been thinking in the back of our mind, would he really skip out on defending his WSX championship, namely because all the rumors point to behind the scenes payments being made to a top athlete of Kenny's level beyond the generous amount of purse money they do put forth. So we kind of wondered, you know, would a rider want to stick it out, potentially race outdoors, even though they're paid to do it, just to race for the championship bonus, just to race for some win bonuses, or would you race some more indoors after coming off of already six, seven, eight months of riding indoors and carry on that experience, that bike setup, and maybe make some more guaranteed money while actually having a few less races. Well, based on the press conference that is starting right the moment this video is launching, which is announcing that Kenny does plan on returning with WSX, we'd have to suspect that yes, the series and Kenny have come to some sort of agreement, something that he feels is financially beneficial and gives him the schedule that he would like for the summer. Now, simply put, why can't you compete in both? Well, WSX has a schedule this year that does slightly conflict with the AMA Pro Motocross Championship and actually does slightly conflict with MXGP. This year, WSX is starting much earlier in the season. Namely, they have two rounds in July, and both of these rounds compete with existing dates for the AMA Pro Motocross Championship. Meaning, if a rider were to try to compete in both, they basically have to pick and choose which ones they're skipping. If you skip the two WSX rounds, then you're only racing four out of six, which the way it's built in, a team needs four riders. They would have to replace you. You probably wouldn't get upfront money from the series if you signed up for it in the way like Kenny is. So that really wouldn't work. If you decide to skip two AMA Pro Motocross rounds, you're going from 11 to nine rounds, and that would pretty much take you, well, with either series, you're pretty much taking yourself out of contention for the title along with one week having to race outdoors and the next week jumping back on Supercross. Yes, back in the day, the guys used to do that, but Supercross has become so much more specialized in the last 20 years or so. It's not a great idea anymore, basically. So Kenny has made his decision, meaning he will skip out again on Pro Motocross to race the WSX Championship. He will be racing for his HEP Suzuki team there, which fields a full four-man team as required by the promoters, with two SX2 and two SX1 riders. The SX1 riders, as far as we are aware, the 450 class will be Kyle Chisholm and Ken Roxon. However, the SX2 class, we're not really sure on. They had Marshall Welton and Dylan Schwartz on 250s and Supercross this year. The HEP team also needs to run two guys, as far as we're aware, in the Pro Motocross Championship and Outdoors. We would expect, based on Marshall Welton's experience, he would be better served for the team to race that outdoor championship. So that still means they need another 450 outdoor guy. And we've heard a rumor that Dylan Schwartz might be leaving the team, which if so, then they'll be looking for two SX2 riders. Either way, that's news that will probably come about in the next couple weeks. Because again, the first round of the WSX Championship is the first weekend of July. The worst part of all this news for the fan of the existing series, existing championships here in America, is it's just one less talent now we have lining up for an already decimated field going into the 2023 Pro Motocross 450 championship specifically. With the injury to Eli Tomac that we just saw happen in Denver, that is going to take him out for the rest of the 23 racing season. Really at this point, most of the teams are decimated with injuries. It comes down to title favorites of maybe being Chase Sexton, Jet Lawrence, and probably Dylan Ferrandis at this point. We don't think that Star Racing is doing a fill-in. Cowie's probably going to start the season with Justine Sorello. Anderson is a question mark. Barsha's coming in injured. KTM is down Cooper Webb. Plessinger is coming off injury. Rockstar Energy Husqvarna has nobody on a 450 and doesn't sound like they plan on filling those spots. And again, the HEP Suzuki team seems to be putting their powerhouse and focus into WSX and not so much on the outdoor championship. So person loses out at the end of this is the fan 
However, the WSX does gain the name rider they need this year because so far their team announcements have been a little bit expected, a lot of the same cast of characters from last year, but again, missing that star power. Having Kenny back is good for them. It's good to not have the rider who won the first championship not come back to defend their number one plate. What does this also mean for the Super Motocross playoffs in Ken Roxon's case? Well, Kenny won a race this year in Supercross, so he's automatically qualified in to at least do the LCQs at SMX playoffs. And he is finishing the Supercross championship probably in top three points due to injuries now. And with that, he should, when we add up all the outdoor points combined, he should still be inside the top 20 in points fairly easily, meaning he can race the SMX races directly qualified in. And the three SMX races do not conflict with WSX. He would be in between his season there and would be able to compete in that, which honestly for any rider at this point in their career, doing US Supercross, World Supercross, and then Super Motocross is probably the most financially beneficial decision that you can make. So that's our latest news break. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. I don't think for most people this news would be a surprise. It's just, again, a little bit of a bummer with the reduced field we already have going into Pro Motocross. So we'd like to hear your thoughts on that and anything else that pops up in your mind from this announcement. Thanks for always tuning into our channel. Thumbs up, like, subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. And stay tuned for more videos.